Well, hey everybody. Uh, it, uh, Blythe and I are, are, are here. Uh, I have an announcement to make, which is why I'm holding this, uh, this beautiful iPad here. Um, so, it, a couple months ago, if you would have tried to use uh, our coding activities with an iPad keyboard, uh, with an iPad, I, iPad keyboard would not work at all. Like it would run, but the keyboard wasn't working correctly for some reasons that I'll talk about in a second. And so over the last like literally six months of my life, I've been going back and forth trying to figure out what the problem is, uh, how to fix it, uh, and I finally kind of managed to get it to, to, to work. And so I want to talk about that. So the first thing to do is to celebrate that we got, I, we got, we got the coding activities work with iPads. Yay! Yeah, iPads, all right. Um, Which uh, new students all have, right? The new... Yes, the second announcement. Oh. Well, the second announcement is that all OSU freshmen, incoming freshmen, are getting free iPads. So if you want a free iPad uh, and you want to go to a great school, Ohio State University <laughs> is the place for you. Uh, is it used iPads? I don't know, actually. It's the brand new iPad. Okay. You're getting, if you come to OSU, you get literally the most expensive iPad that can be bought. <laughs> and you're getting, not only are you getting the most expensive one, you're getting next, you're getting the new expensive one, the one that's like not even out yet, barely. Oh. Isn't that crazy? And so I've been using these coding activities in my courses for a long time, and now my students all have iPads and it wasn't working at all. <laughs> So it was like something has something has to happen, um, and so all of our coding activities use something called p5.js, which is developed by a group by the Processing Foundation, and all the stuff is on uh, is what's, what's called open source, free and open source, and so all of the code that's sort of behind all this p5.js is a is a library, it's a JavaScript library, so. Um, that library, 100% of that code is, is visible on GitHub, which is why we have GitHub here. Um, now you said you used GitHub before, at some point in your research, or? Yeah, to like share code with collaborators. Um, I haven't contributed to like, you know, any massive project or anything like that, but it's useful for getting people on the same version of the code you're working on. Yeah, if you want to be cool in the coding world, you, you can contribute to all the different projects, and then on your GitHub site, it shows all the different amazing projects you contributed to. If you look at mine, I'm pretty good at coding, but it's basically been nothing, 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 nothing up until this iPad thing. <laughs> so this is like my one claim to fame now. So what we can do is, uh, on the, the left there, it says uh, processing slash p5.js, so that takes us to uh, not my page, but the page for um, uh, p5.js. And so when I first noticed that the iPad keyboard wasn't working quite, quite right, I, what I did is I, 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 I created an issue. So when you're involved in some project and you find a bug or something like that, the first thing you do is you want to go create an issue. Now they close the issue, and so in a second uh, we'll, we'll search on uh, We'll search for iPads on this issue list. And it's configured to do open, but if you, if you change it to do closed, you should be able to find the post that I made. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring up what exactly the problem is on the iPads, because um, if you don't use my version, it still has the problem. So I'm going to bring that up for a second. Did you find it yet? Yes. Yeah, just search on iPad there. This up. I know this is riveting television, but uh, oh, I see some I see some posts from Chris Orban. Yep. Yes, the yeah ex iPad external keyboard issues with keyboard.js. So the first thing I did is I raised a red flag and I said, "There's a bug. Somebody fix this, for goodness sakes." <laughs> and what you have to do is you have to say, "All right, well." This was the operating system, so I had to select uh, iPad. I had to select, uh, or sorry, this, sorry. This is this is considered an event, so a keyboard issue is considered part of an event. Um, and I had to say what uh, what operating system. So so it says mobile tablet is the issue, um, and 
iPads use something called iOS, which is the same operating system as, I, as iPhones. And uh, so here in a nutshell is the problem, is that you see this little black square there? So if a key is pressed, it is supposed to turn white, and it does. Uh, but then when you let go of the key, it's supposed to turn black again. Um, so if you want to look at, uh, so if you want to go to p5js.org uh, under reference, and you, you're looking for the key pressed command, which is down in the middle. Okay, so so this is a page from the p5.js reference. It's called key pressed. And the issue is that if you press a key on a regular keyboard, like this laptop here, it turns it from black to white. That's correct. But if you press that same key again, it should turn it black again. Right? OK? The problem is that if I press a key here on the iPad, it turns it from black to white. But if I press the key again, it does not turn it black again. And so there's this issue where you can kind of press something once, but then if you want to press it again, it doesn't really know what's going on. That's a problem. <laughs> um, and it's a particularly a problem for the arrow keys, because a lot of our coding activities, a lot of the video games, mm -hmm. have arrow keys on them. And so that wasn't working right. And it turned out that this problem with key, key pressed uh, was also causing an issue with, uh, let's see, the key is down command. So this command, you notice in, in almost all of our activities, uh, we've got, you know, move the blob, use key is down. Uh, accelerate the blob, use key is down. Uh, Asteroids, key is down. Mm -hmm. Planetoids. Uh, planetoids, yeah. So none of these were working right. And so what I did is I, is I figured out how to hack the p5.js library to at least get the arrow keys on the iPad keyboard to work with the keys down. So, which is nice because now that the library is fixed, I don't have to change anything about my code to get it to work. I just have to make sure that I'm using the up-to-date library that I've kind of manipulated. So the first thing I did was to create an issue here and I outlined the problem, and I don't know if you can scroll down. And I tried to pinpoint exactly what the issue was, and I got all kinds of people to, to kind of look into it. Uh, 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 some of the people that created p5.js and created the, so Lauren McCarthy uh, and uh, Cassie, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess up her last name, but, but Cassie and Lauren, uh, who created p5.js uh, and, and the, the web editor who lead those projects. They took a look at it. Um, they weren't sure exactly what to do. Uh, but we had a discussion about it. And so then I went back to the drawing board and decided to start hacking on the p5.js library myself. And so, uh, yeah, we kind of went back and forth <laughs> for quite a while. Uh, and, and if you look at the timestamps on this thing, it goes back for a couple of months. And so then eventually I figured out uh, the problem, at least for the arrow keys, and I was able to get that to work again. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring that up here. But if you want to go, uh, go back a page and look for pull requests. So if you make an improvement to some uh, open source code that's on, on GitHub, and by the way, you can download the code by clicking that kind of button, things like that. Which we, which we won't do now, um, <coughs> but if you if you improve a code, what you do is is, is a pull request. So if you want to search for pull request, then search on iPads. I think that's yours, right? Yeah, that's that must be it. So if you want to bring that up, <coughs> so does the check mark mean it was approved? Um. The check mark means that I got through the tests. And so the fun part about this is that I'd never done this before. I'd never tried to improve uh, p5.js or anything like that. Um, and so what I did was uh, I, I downloaded it. I made my modifications to it. I got it working on my computer. 
Um, but then I tried to submit it there, and, and it, you, you'll notice what happened was that uh, there's, there was a check that it did, and it failed that check. <laughs> and then I made some other changes, it failed that one again, and then it failed it again. And what I found was that there was very strict syntax requirements on, there is, there, they have a particular style, and so the curly brackets have to be in exactly the right place. Um, no extra spaces on the end of the line. So that was what, what some of these were. Because I would have like, you know, end of a line and a whole bunch of spaces, which were invisible, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're just spaces, you can't even see them unless you put the cursor over there. So I had to get rid of all those spaces and make sure I conform to the style requirements. Which if you have a big public code, you don't want it to look messy. So sometimes that's important. But eventually I managed to get through all those tests. And I then here I just sort of sent a message to the developer saying, hey, I got it to work. Uh, please consider this for, uh, what's, for what's called the main branch of the code. So hopefully the next release of P5 will include these enhancements um, from this pull request. So anyway, this is a fun thing we've been working on. So at the end of the day, what happens is that, uh, so now I can do our uh, move the blob thing, so I don't know if you guys can see that at all enough. But now I can, uh, is that even a visible blob? Um, I can see the... You see the little the circle button. moving? I can't see the circle moving. No, you can't see the circle <laughs> moving? So it used to be that I would press the right arrow and the little circle would just keep on moving. Uh, it would never stop. Which is really weird, because that's not what it does on a regular computer, right? As soon as you let go of the arrow key, it would stop, but uh, but now it now it does the right behavior. I'm sorry, you guys can't see. Maybe if I go back here, does that help at all? Maybe not. Um, so, but now it has the right movement. So, uh, both last year's hour code activity is now compatible with iPads, which is really cool because that's one of the things on the hour code. Uh, the new hour code activities, which you're in a lot of them. Oh, cool! Yeah. So the pong pong is on hourcode.com. Bonk.io is on our com, which are two of my favorite uh, videos, by the way. Um, both of those are compatible now with iPads, as well as uh, Planetoids and all that other stuff. So anyway, I wanted to have a victory lap on the iPad stuff because we worked really hard on it. Now, now here's one thing though: is the problem is that only the arrow keys work now. So that there's the keyboard. So the arrow keys will work, but if you try to change this so it's W A S D to move the things around. That's not going to work, um, and I tried to get it to work, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't get it. So it's a long story why it doesn't work. But uh, if you look in the issues and, and what's going on, maybe if you can if you can fix it, that would be fantastic. Because um, the the only downside to not being able to use these WASD keys is that I think for Bonk.io, it suggests that if you want to have a two-player mode. You could use the arrow keys here and then try to use WASD for the other player. Um, so that would work on a regular computer, but uh, I'm sorry to say it's not going to work on an iPad. Um, but that was one of the first things I tried. I said, okay, well, if the arrow keys don't work, we'll just change it to WASD. But that didn't, that didn't work either, and it wasn't until I was able to hack the arrow keys that it actually got to work. So anyway, so that's the iPad update. Um, and so we're happy to share the news. Cross your fingers on having that included with uh, the next release of P5.js, which I imagine should happen in the next few months. Um, so, so hopefully in a few months, everybody can take advantage of the, the new capability with the iPad. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks, Blythe, for hanging out with us. So thanks, guys.